So let's go and take a look here. Um, we have 3x minus 1 divided by x squared minus 5x plus 6 minus 4 times x minus 2. First thing, I see a trinomial. Hey, let's factor it. Is, you know, make sure it's factorable first before you put a line through it. Um, looks like this one's going to be x minus 6 times x plus 1. But that doesn't, oh, that does add, doesn't it? No, that doesn't work, because that gives you a negative 6, right? So that doesn't work. But then, here's a trick. Do you guys see how there's an x minus 2 here? More likely than not, that's going to be a factor of that, right? So rather than trying to figure out the factoring and getting it wrong and then realizing you have three factors, what you can do is look at the other denominator and say that's more likely than not going to be another potential factor. And let's do that. Let's pretend that ha that is a factor. Well, what do I have to multiply by to give me this? Oh, that's going to be x minus 3. Oh, that's the correct answer because that gives you a positive 6. Agreed? OK. So now, again, we have our denominator. And again, when we're trying to find common denominators, we want to first identify what they have in common. Well, they both share an x minus 2. So that's part of my common denominator. And then we want to include what they don't have in common, which is a x minus 3. That is your common denominator. Don't need to overthink it. Don't need to write down the multiples of everything like you did with numbers, right? Because it's too complicated to do that. So now, this is already my common denominator. So the only thing I need to do is multiply this right side by x minus 3 over x minus 3. So therefore, I have 3x minus 1. Am I, are you guys OK with me actually just combining these together as one denominator minus 4 times x minus 3 all over x minus 2 times x minus 3? Because again, once they have common denominators, you can just apply the operations to the numerators under the common denominator, right? Yes. I could show an extra step, but it just takes more time. It's more writing. So then, just make sure you apply distributed property. Again, notice how I use parentheses here. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of combine in my head. 3x minus 4x is going to be a negative x. Negative 1 plus 3 is going to be a positive 2. All over my common denominator, negative 2 and x minus 3. I didn't explain that. Oh, I did write it up there. I said, make sure you include the excluded values. So we've got to say, hey, well, what values can we go ahead and exclude? We can include a 2 and a 3. Because those are the values, I'm not done yet, those are the values that make it, um, make it uh, 0, right? But then we should also go back and check and say, can we simplify this any further? Well, I see a negative. If I factored out that negative, look what happens. So my final answer is a negative 1 over x minus 3. Does that change the excluded values, though? No. The excluded values are still 2 and 3. Yes? Question? So um, when you were doing the distributive property, what about like 4 times? I have no idea why, that, why I stopped doing that. That should be 12, right? Yeah, I have no idea. I like forgot about the 4. So dang it, that was a nice example, though. I like that, how that worked. Dang it. Good catch, though. Thank you. So yeah, I like totally overshot the 4. So that becomes a plus 11. So that's a negative x plus 11. Dang it. That would have been cool, though, wouldn't it? Well, I guess I can just put 11 there. But the excluded values don't change, though, right? There you go.